The rain nattering at the roof at first invades a vivid dream in the midst of an afternoon nap and the thunder explodes like a landmine in a parka blowing the humid heat away. You rise. In the rain-swept breeze, you stand shirtless on the deck like a half-naked soldier. Enjoy walking and surviving in the last jagged bolt of lightning. You sleep on Kine Creek till your body get immune to Kine Creek. My mom got my brother and I up and said, come on, we're leaving. I became homeless in the beginning of this year. When I was about four or five years old, our house caught fire. I used to see my brother. If he see me, he'd turn and go the other direction. We did the only thing that we could think of, and we went to a Salvation Army shelter. You know, we don't have this, like, what's your background look like? We just say, what do you need? I remember the man from the Salvation Army coming down with a box of clothes. The Salvation Army officer bought my brother and I an ice cream cone. Last week, my brother walked up to me, and he just started a conversation. Today, I've given my life to the Salvation Army because I remember uh, what somebody did for me, my brother, and my mom over 30 years ago. The Salvation Army, for me, means hope. Compassion. Family. Support. Hello, my name is Yareli, and I'm a seventh grader at the YMCA. The teacher noticed that she was having some trouble um, with her, her reading and her math scores. Uh, oddly enough, with Yareli, her, her math scores, it wasn't her ability to handle the math, it was the English involved in the math that was keeping her down. I didn't make a lot of friends because I was always quiet, sitting alone. The teacher uh, knew about the uh, while learning program. They put us to read words, and if you didn't know them, you would raise your hand and they would pronounce it for you, or they would help you sound it out so you know how to sound out words that you don't know. That, that helped me a lot. She had a connection, especially to, to Jasmine, um, who was one of her first counselors. Ms. Jasmine is really funny. She plays a lot. Um, having the counselors kind of like a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, like a buddy. When I'm not feeling good, she'll make me laugh. As she has mastered um, English and, and became more confident in communicating with the outside world and communicating her thoughts, communicating her feelings, communicating the things she wants, the things she needs, once that's happened and that gap has been bridged, um, she's been able to communicate Yoreli, which, which is all she's ever really wanted to do. Early on, I never considered uh, that there are a lot of research questions that aren't good. That aren't research questions. That aren't research questions. <laughs> I mean, if you can't answer it, then there, there's no reason to look into it. It's like a good hypothesis. A good hypothesis should be able to go either way. It can be right or it's wrong, or it can be disproven. Well, actually, Susan Kay was, was I, I think the example she used in our research in, in uh, the quantitative methods class was, look, uh, uh, um, does God exist is not a research question. <laughs> it's not a research question. It can't be answered. Right. It cannot be Still empirically who... answered. Um, and so, so that's one of the first, first things that you have to drill into people. Is this an empirical question or not? Could we mm -hmm. find evidence that either disproves or proves, even though we don't technically prove anything, we'll just say it that way. Mm -hmm. Can we find evidence that either proves or disproves this? If we can't, it's not a real research question. It's an interesting question, but there's lots of interesting questions that are not researchable. Mm -hmm. If astronomers find 
an asteroid that's going to hit us and that enables us to save the world, astronomy will have paid for itself a million times over. But there's a lot of things that we do. I study quasars, you know, halfway across the entire universe. They're not relevant to our existence. They're not likely to be relevant to our existence. But I think a society that values knowledge, that values a basic understanding of the universe and our place in it, I think that's an incredibly valuable thing. And that's what I value about our civilization. And uh, one of the reasons I'm, I'm a scientist, I don't want to just get up in the morning, go to work, make some money, go home, watch TV, go to bed. Uh, and I don't think average people want to do that either. They want to be engaged in the whole process. Their tax dollars go toward astronomy, other basic science. They should get a return. They should be able to look up in the sky instead of feeling, gee, I'm so small. They should feel like, wow, we're, we're a great species that has figured out how big the universe is, how old the universe is. And that doesn't make us small, that makes us large. This is not the community that we want to give up to conservatives to say they're the only people with moral values, they're the only people that get to be in public space because of what you did, because of your collective power as lesbian, gay, bi, trans people and our allies. Yesterday, we met with Cameron Village and they gave us everything we asked for. <laughs> demand and get, because of your power, complete, broad, anti-discrimination training around racism, classism, sexism, ableism, and homophobia. <laughs> we were able to get a policy on York security, both around their hiring and their surveillance, that they will not discriminate on the basis of race, class, gender, culture, and sexuality. Surprise. That is a surprise nose. Oh, it's a hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> surprise. What is that? It's a turkey. Oh. No, the, <laughs> that was the, a surprise. No, it was. Not turkeys. It's just like you. So I'm going to try it. So what I'm going to do on it. Show Daddy how you can draw a turkey, okay? Oh. 
Sure. Don't cry. Oh, I love you so much. I don't want him to cry. They're good tears, though. <laughs> They're good tears. Yep. Okay, better. All right. <laughs>